my fellow Singaporeans, good afternoon. Earlier today, I saw President Halima Yaakob to advise her to dissolve Parliament and issue the writ of election. Let me explain why I have decided to call the general election now. We are approaching the end of the five-year term of this government. Under the Constitution, elections must be held at the latest by April 2021. That is less than a year away. We have been fully occupied with the COVID-19 outbreak since the beginning of the year. The pandemic set upon the world suddenly. It quickly grew into a global crisis spreading across many countries. Around the world, nearly half a million people have died and countless more have seen their lives disrupted. Singapore detected our first cases in January. At first, most were imported cases. But soon we observed a growing number of local cases with no links to infected visitors. In March, the numbers grew, especially later when COVID-19 started spreading among migrant workers in dormitories. We responded decisively. We imposed a circuit breaker for two months. We made strenuous efforts to care for our migrant workers. In the dormitories, we are making steady progress, though it will take a few more months to resolve the problem. At the same time, new community cases have come down sharply. Most importantly, we have kept the number of fatalities very low. Right now, we only have one patient in the ICU, in hospital. Still, the virus has taken a heavy toll on livelihoods. Around the world, the lockdowns and the public health measures have caused a deep economic crisis. In Singapore, we have mitigated this with massive fiscal action. We passed four budgets, injecting almost $100 billion. We are drawing from our reserves to support workers, businesses and households. These decisive emergency actions have kept retrenchments and company closures low. They have helped Singaporeans take care of their families and see through the immediate crisis. After great effort, we are now in a stable position. We are cautiously resuming social activities and progressively reviving our economy. Life can now become more normal than it was during the circuit breaker, provided we all continue to take the precautions seriously. But we should be under no illusions that we have defeated COVID-19. This is just the end of the beginning phase. A long struggle lies ahead. COVID-19 will be with us for at least a year, and most probably longer, until a vaccine is developed and becomes available. It is a very difficult and tricky disease to deal with. So we have to continue keeping a close watch on the situation. Many other countries have successfully brought their cases down only to experience fresh outbreaks after opening up again. For example, in South Korea, from night spots in Etewon in Seoul, or China, from a market in Beijing, or Germany, in an abattoir, or in the United States, in the southern Sun Belt states. Therefore, we must be psychologically prepared for more ups and downs in this fight against COVID-19. Economically, we must brace ourselves for a very tough period ahead. Singapore has not yet felt the full economic fallout from COVID-19. But 
it is coming. Despite all the measures we have taken, there will be more business closures and more retrenchments in the coming months. Unemployment will go up. But we are determined to save as many jobs as we can and create new jobs too. And we will do our utmost to help businesses and industries survive and restructure themselves. That is how we can keep our capabilities and livelihoods intact through the storm and pick up again when the sun shines once more. COVID-19, the economy and jobs are domestic concerns, but we also face external uncertainties. Major regional and global developments can affect us. US-China tensions over many issues, now including Hong Kong. The US presidential elections in November. Border clashes between China and India. Political developments near the home in Southeast Asia. We do not know what surprises may be in store for us within the next year. But as dangers materialize, we must navigate safely through them and protect Singapore's security and national interests. And this will require diplomatic skills and a deft touch. To overcome these challenges, we must stand completely united as one people. Singaporeans and the government must work closely together with full trust and confidence in each other. The government must be able to respond promptly and decisively to the COVID-19 outbreak and the economic situation and to external developments. We need a capable government with a strong backing of the people to do all that needs to be done on your behalf and see us through these tumultuous times. An election now, when things are relatively stable, will clear the decks and give the new government a fresh, full five-year mandate. It can then focus on this national agenda and the difficult decisions it will have to make and to carry. The alternative is to wait out the COVID-19 pandemic. But we have no assurance that the pandemic will be over before this government's term must end next April. And that is why I have decided to hold the general election now. We are still in the midst of COVID-19, so it will not be a normal election campaign. Before deciding to proceed, I had to be certain of two things. First, that voters can vote safely, and second, that political parties can campaign effectively. After studying the issues, I'm satisfied that both of these can be done. On voter safety, the Elections Department will be implementing additional precautions on polling day. We are setting up more polling stations than in previous elections to reduce crowding. There will be safe distancing measures practiced at the polling stations. Voters will be allocated specific time slots to vote, and seniors will be given priority to vote before others. On effective campaigning, the Elections Department has also made arrangements and issued guidelines. Candidates can still go house-to-house -house campaigning in person, provided they observe the safe distancing precautions. Unfortunately, physical election rallies will not be possible, but we will make up with more opportunities for candidates to speak directly to voters on television and, of course, online, for example, via live streaming. Singapore is not the first to hold an election during COVID-19. Others have done so too, South Korea, Taiwan, and several European countries. 
With our arrangements and precautions in place, I'm confident we can hold a proper and safe election. During the election period, the government will continue to govern. The cabinet remains in charge, even after parliament is dissolved. The public service will function normally. This is so in every general election, but I particularly emphasize this now because of the vital importance of ongoing operations against COVID-19, sustaining the economy and protecting jobs. Therefore, over the next few weeks, you can expect the Ministerial Task Force still to lead our response to COVID-19. On the economic front, the National Jobs Council will create jobs and training places. Businesses, workers and families will receive help and support. All this essential work on your behalf will go on, uninterrupted, throughout the election period. This general election will be like no other that we have experienced. Not just because of the special arrangements to deal with COVID-19, but because of the gravity of the situation and the issues at stake. The government that you elect will have critical decisions to make. These decisions will impact your lives and livelihoods and shape Singapore for many years to come, far beyond the five-year term of the next government. Soon, you will have the chance to decide whom to entrust with the responsibility of working with you to take our country forward. I have every confidence that you will think carefully and vote wisely to secure our lives, our jobs and our future. Thank you. And you're just listening to Singapore Prime Minister Lee Sin Lung addressing the nation from the Istana. PM Lee has advised President Halima Yaakob to dissolve Parliament and to issue the writ of election. He explained why he has decided to call for an election at this time. Mr Lee said he is satisfied that voting can be held safely and that campaigning can take place effectively. The alternative would be to wait out the COVID-19 pandemic, but no one knows if it will be over before the current government's term ends. because. Polls must be held by next April. Now, the Singapore government has passed four budgets, injecting almost $100 billion. And he reminded Singapore that it has by no means defeated COVID-19, despite the current stable position, and that it must brace itself for a very tough position ahead. Now, PM Lee says he has met with President Halima Yaakob to advise her to dissolve parliament and issue the writ of election. And in live broadcast to the nation, Mr Lee explained why he has decided to call for an election at this time, amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr Lee said he is satisfied that voting can be held safely and that campaigning can take place effectively. The alternative would be to wait out the COVID-19 pandemic, but no one knows if it will be over before the current government's term ends. Mr Lee said Singapore was in a stable position with the coronavirus situation and the jobs challenge, as new community cases have come down sharply. And the government has injected $100 billion to support workers, businesses and households. But the country must brace itself for a long fight against the disease, saying the situation in migrant worker dormitories will take another few months to resolve, and that Singapore has not yet felt the full economic fallout from COVID-19. He added there are also external uncertainties, like the rise of tensions between the US and China. He reassured Singaporeans that the government and the public service will continue to function even after parliament is dissolved, and that the multi-ministry task force will continue to lead the response to COVID-19. Also, that essential work will go on throughout the election period. To overcome these challenges, we must stand completely united as one people. Singaporeans and the government must work closely together with full trust and confidence in each other. The government must be able to respond promptly and decisively to the COVID-19 outbreak and the economic situation 
and to external developments. We need a capable government with a strong backing of the people to do all that needs to be done on your behalf and see us through these tumultuous times. An election now, when things are relatively stable, will clear the decks and give the new government a fresh, full five-year mandate. It can then focus on this national agenda and the difficult decisions it will have to make and to carry. The alternative is to wait out the COVID-19 pandemic. But we have no assurance that the pandemic will be over before this government's term must end next April. And that is why I have decided to hold the general election now. We are still in the midst of COVID-19, so it will not be a normal election campaign. Before deciding to proceed, I had to be certain of two things. First, that voters can vote safely. And second, that political parties can campaign effectively. After studying the issues, I'm satisfied that both of these can be done. Well, with Parliament dissolved and the writ of election issued, Singapore is all set for the polls. Here's what we can expect in the coming days. To contest in the general election, an applicant needs to submit a complete set of documents in person between 11 a.m. and noon on nomination day. They are to submit their papers at specific nomination centres for the constituency they intend to contest in. Once confirmed, candidates can start campaigning as soon as nomination closes. Due to the pandemic, there will not be any physical rallies. Instead, candidates can stream their campaigns online. Candidates also have up to three minutes each to speak in the newly introduced constituency political broadcasts, which will be aired on Channel 5. And just like in 2015, there will be two party political broadcasts, which will be aired on 19 TV and radio channels. The amount of airtime a party gets to share its message is determined by the number of candidates it feels. Then comes the cooling off day, which falls a day before Singaporeans head to the polls. On this day, no campaigning is allowed. And let's take a closer look at the regulations and procedures surrounding nomination day. On nomination day, a candidate must submit a complete set of forms. These forms consist of the nomination form and the political donation certificate, which lists the donations they have received and declares that they came from permissible donors. Minorities who are contesting in a group representation constituency, or GRC, must also obtain a certificate from either the Malay Community Committee or the Indian and Other Minority Communities Committee. Previously, a candidate would have to make a trip to the Elections Department to collect these forms. But starting with this upcoming election, these forms are now available online, thanks to new digital services on the Elections Department website. Candidates can log into the system using their SingPass and two-factor authentication. As part of the application, the candidate needs the signatures of a proposer, a seconder and at least four assenters. These are voters who endorse the candidate's nomination and they must be residents of the ward the candidate is contesting in. Nomination papers will, however, still need to be printed out and handed to the returning officer at the nomination centre between 11am and noon on the nomination day. Candidates can also object to any nomination. These can be based on the grounds that candidates are not suitable or when nomination papers have not been properly filled. Once nomination closes at noon and no objections are raised by 12.30pm, Singaporeans will know if there are any walkovers or constituencies which are not contested. 